Hello mushroom friends, uh, it's been a very hot and muggy uh, mid-May day here in beautiful southern Indiana. Uh, we've had lots of rain the last couple weeks, uh, so I thought it might be fun to explore this nice shady southern slope of the beech maple oak forest and see what mushrooms we can find. Come on! Alright, so here's some interesting mushrooms. Um, oh, there's some more over there. Ooh, look how green those are underneath. Cool. Okay, so these are Hypholoma fascicular, the sulfur tuft. Um, you'll know the sulfur tuft uh, by their green fertile surface, those dark green spores. Well, actually the spores are kind of uh, purplish, darkish brown, uh, but with the yellow mushroom, uh, they look green, especially when they're older and the underneath. Uh, this is a very deadly toxic uh, poisonous mushroom, uh, not to be confused with the honey mushroom, Armillaria melia, which will have a white spore print. This will have a dark spore print. Uh, they can grow on the same rotting logs. It grows on rotting uh, deciduous wood and even conifer wood, uh, more commonly on deciduous wood. Uh, but something to look out for if you're gonna try to eat uh, honey mushrooms, always inspect them individually and make sure that you don't have any sulfur tufts. Uh, these will give you explosive diarrhea and GI distress and vomiting and even paralysis and death if you eat a lot of them. So uh, something to avoid, definitely. Um, they can be a little brighter yellow when they're younger. You can tell them by their sulfur color, by the uh, stem getting oranger as it goes down. Um, but mostly the giveaway is this greenish color underneath. You see a yellowy mushroom like this, that's green underneath, uh, don't eat it. Uh, so that's a really cool mushroom. Uh, really excited to find these. And let's move on to the next thing. Some funeral bells, deadly gallerana, one of the most toxic and deadly mushrooms in the forest. I think we've covered those before. Ooh, look at this guy. Okay, so this is Pluteus cervinus, the deer shield mushroom, or deer mushroom, or fawn mushroom. Uh, you can recognize it by its kind of dark umbo, this little button here on the top, uh, this kind of deer hide color uh, to the cap. It will have pinkish uh, gills underneath. It ha should have a salmon or a rusty brown spore print and uh, a bare white stem, no ring. And also a way to identify this one is that the gills are free, meaning they are not attached to the stem. There's a little space there where the gills stop and the cap extends to the stem and there's a little bare area uh, between them that is called a free gills. Um, but yeah, this is an edible mushroom. Technically, uh, it's not sought after. It doesn't uh, have good flavor and I think it just kind of falls apart in the pan. Um, but a really cool mushroom you can find uh, here in the woods, spring, summer, and fall. And I think I've even found them in the winter uh, a couple of times. So. That's a pretty common mushroom. Uh, let's see what else we can find. Ooh. Got some bear corn, quite a bit. Uh, it's near the end of its uh, life cycle of its fruiting body here. Um, this is the bane of many a uh, morel mushroom hunter. They do come out at the same time as the morel mushrooms and you'll stumble upon them and think you found a big grouping of morel mushrooms, uh, but that is not the case. This is a plant. Yeah, so this is bear corn. It is not a fungus. It is a plant. 
a parasitic plant uh, that does not need chlorophyll because it just attaches to the roots of oak trees and gets its nutrients uh, from the tree. So it doesn't need chlorophyll to produce its own food. Uh, just sucks it out of the roots of this poor oak tree here and uh, then creates these kind of unique pine cone looking flowers that create seeds and spread itself throughout the forest here. Bear corn. All right, let's see what else we can find. So in here, just under the, uh, just below, the bear corn is the common funnel mushroom, Infundibulisai vitgiba. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool little funnel mushroom. Kind of a potato chip color, darker in the center, and uh, it uh, will form this vase shape uh, when it uh, matures. Uh, it can be in fairy rings or larger groups. This is kind of strange to find just one by itself. Um, that's not usually the case. Um, it's a saprophytic fungus living off the decomposing dead material on the forest floor. But yeah, that's another cool spring mushroom. The common funnel. All right, let's see what else we can find. Hmm. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh man, that's so many mushrooms. Whoa. Beautiful. Super cool. So this is a Mega Calibia rodmanii. Uh, it looks a lot like a deer shield mushroom, uh, but it comes out in these uh, big groupings. Uh, it has the same dark spot in the middle, that kind of deer hide color, uh, the tannish brown. Uh, but you'll notice the gills are not pink. They are creamish white. And the uh, stem is also white and, and bare, but the attachment is not quite free. There's not uh, a big gap there between the gills and the upper portion of the stem. No exposed cap, uh, a little more attached. Um, but yeah, the spore print on this should be white. Uh, it is technically edible, although it's not recommended that they do make people ill and they are not sought after. They don't taste good or cook up well. Uh, this will start off with a convex kind of cap and then often split up like this one did as it grows. Uh, but a uh, really cool mushroom, really happy to have found this giant cluster of all these mushrooms. Uh, you too may find these in the spring on rotting wood or buried wood under the ground. Uh, let's move on and see what the next thing is. Oh wow. Look at these guys. Super cool. So I'm not completely sure. I believe this is some kind of Cortinarius fungus. It's this beautiful uh, light violet color. Uh, has the darkish brownish violet gills. Smells very mushroomy. That's nice. <laughs> and this big uh, base at the bottom. This one's kind of peeling up for some reason. Um, these can be kind of wavy on the edge. I'm not sure exactly what species of Cortinarius. So Cortinarius is, are uh, not edible. Um, and they often have what's called the Cortina, which is a little web-like uh, fibrous uh, connection between the cap and the stem when it uh, dislodges as it grows. Uh, but just a beautiful, really cool mushroom. So I'm going to take this home and uh, maybe do a spore print, do some research, and try to figure out exactly which kind of mushroom this is. Okay, let's uh, make some spore prints here. Uh, normally you'd want to do this inside and we'll cover them and wait 24 to 48 hours and see what the spore prints look like. Okay, so I made a few mistakes here. I uh, should not have kept these in my garage while it was 90 degrees outside. So uh, it's just too hot and humid. Uh, these kind of melted and cooked. Um, 
But let's see if we got any indications of some spores here. Here's the Mega Calibia, the platter foam mushroom. Definitely some white spores there. Now the deer mushroom, uh, I can see why these aren't a good edible. It just kind of totally turned to mush. <laughs> Imagine that was, was what would happen if you tried to cook it. Um, but yeah, there's uh, definitely some salmon rusty brown spores there. That checks out for the deer shield mushroom. The funnel cap, uh, just a tiny bit of white there. Um, that's also checks out, uh, didn't give off a whole lot. And then we have our little sulfur tuft here. This should be like a purpley dark. I don't know if you can see that right here. There's a faint purpley dark spore outline there. And the Cortinarius. Not a whole lot, but yeah, definitely some kind of brownish tan spores. Kind of similar to the deer shield, maybe not quite as pinkish. But yeah, there they are. Uh, but yeah, that uh, was a fun little mushroom hunt to try to do better on the spore prints next time. Uh, but I hope you found that entertaining and informative. And I'll see you next time on Mushroom Journeys. <laughs>